in a matter of moments, we are going to be joined by Cub Swanson, who I actually wanted to talk to last week on this program, but he was traveling during the program. He, uh, of course, is coming off that amazing win over Du Ho Choi. I watched it again last night. It's amazing. What a great fight. Fight of the year contender for sure. You wonder what would have happened if it was a uh, five round. Someone, someone said to me last week that there should be two fight of the year awards. There should be one for the five round fights and another for the three round fights. And I think it's, it's a valid point. You might be watering it down a touch if you do that, but it's a valid point. There are, there are a lot of fights that you're like, man, if it was two more rounds, what would have happened? Um, and certainly, I mean, if, if it's a three round fight, there's that one. There's a few other ones. The Reyes fight from 199. Still kind of leaning towards Condit and Lawler, which happened, by the way, you know, last fight on the first card of the year. And another reason why I didn't want to miss today's show, when I think about that fight, I think about this. We've done this show, by the way, 51 straight weeks in 2016. We haven't missed a show this year. New York Rick missed like four because he had a honeymoon in the middle of the year, his third honeymoon um, of his marriage. But we haven't missed a show. I missed one, of course, when my lovely new daughter was born. Uh, but we have given you 51 straight live episodes. So I didn't want that streak to end just yet. And so when I think of it, it all started back, I think it was January 4th of this past year when we did that uh, year-end award show and also talked about Lawler and Condit. And I said on that show that wouldn't it be something if the first show of the year, the main event of the first show of the year ends up being the fight of the year. So we shall find out. But for now, let's go to the Skype machine and talk to Mr. Cub Swanson, who was in Sacramento, by the way, to watch that UFC on Fox show. There he is, Mr. Cub Swanson himself. How are you, Cub? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Have you? Wa How many times have you watched your show, uh, your fight thus far? Uh, I mean, I saw the highlights quite a few times, but I actually watched the fight twice. Twice. I watched it a, a minute ago, just because I, I figured you were going to ask me a lot of questions, so I should probably watch it. <laughs> do you enjoy watching it again? I do. Um, I always like to enjoy my work, and then I'm pretty critical, so then I start dissecting and going, "All right." I could have done this better, you know. What, what's the biggest thing that you wish you did better in that fight? Um, I think pressure him a little earlier. You know, the game plan was to kind of go out there and, and stick and move. Because I knew, I knew I was going to have to brawl with them. I, I told the coaches because they wanted me to kind of play that game plan the whole time. And I was like, look, I just don't think chipping away at this kid is going to put him away. I think I'm going to have to brawl with them, and I have no problem with that but he's pretty sharp. So I wanted to like chip away at him and then brawl with him because he's used to finishing people in the first round. So I wanted to get him a little tired and then brawl with him. So he wasn't as sharp and then start to like break down. What has the past week been like for you? I mean, do you feel like people view you differently? Are you getting a little more respect? I knew you were at that show in Sacramento. Um, you know, people love that fight. Like I said, fight of the year contender. Are you feeling the love? Oh, definitely. Um, it's funny. I, I'm not, I'm not too big on compliments, so it, it's a little strange, uh, especially, you know, having been in this sport for a while, you know, it's like, you know, a couple of fights ago, people were like, you suck, you should retire. Sure. So sure. Sure. Now it's the complete opposite. People are like, somebody told me, uh, that was the fight of the century. And I was like, I don't really know if that was the fight of the century. I think it was really good, but you know, come on. <laughs> Do you think it's the fight of the year? Um, possibly. I mean, uh, uh, I would give it to, to Condé and Lawler because there was a lot at stake and it was a five round fight and, and they threw down. So, I mean, that would have been my pick. Do you think that there should be two awards for fight of the year, five round fight and three round fight? I mean, that makes sense. Um, and, and I mean, I feel like we should get extra bonuses for that. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Although who... Well, more importantly. Yeah. Like you're saying if you win a, a, like a fight of the year award or fighter of the year, knockout of the year, that they should give you an extra bonus, you're saying, the UFC? I think so. Yeah. I think that the UFC should do their own award show like they do in the NHL now with the NBA, uh, like where, they, where you guys go. You know, I know there's a fighter's only one, but I feel like the UFC should do their own. And 
that should be, you know, a stipulation that if you win one of those awards, you get 50,000 more or whatever. We should do that. Petition to Yeah, I mean, there'd be a lot of cool ones like most strikes landed uh, in a year, most takedowns landed, you know what I mean? Like, it, I, I'm a stats guy, so, you know, I watch the NFL and, and I'm always looking at stats and, and seeing who's who. And that's that's what makes me like college football because – I start seeing all the players that are, that are coming up and then I watch them go into the NFL and I yeah, keep yeah. track of them, see who lived up to the hype and who didn't. As, as a veteran of the sport, are you proud of a fight like that? Because you did, you, you know, you, you took a lot of shots. He took way more shots, but like, is that, you know, I, I think of some fighters who say, I don't want the fight of the night award. Cause that means I was in a brawl. I was in a war. Do you want those kind mm-hmm. of fights at this stage of your career? Um, it's good, you know, for, for the fans, and it's going to be good for me looking back. I'd like to have easier nights. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my easiest night was this the last time I fought in Toronto with Charles Oliveira. And uh, that was a weird feeling, too, because that one I almost got upset with him because I was like, I had such a hard training camp, and I thought that he gave up, and it just pissed me off. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's no making myself happy, but... Um, I can enjoy it, but I, I prefer an easier night at this stage of my career just because I don't, you know, it hurts a little bit more, you sure. know, walking the next days, traveling, trying to get home with, you know, it was painful. Yeah. Cause you had to stay overnight in Chicago, right? Yeah. They shipped my bags all the way home. Oh. So I was stuck in Chicago with just like a light jacket and, you know, obviously I packed all my big stuff, thought I was going to be on a plane. So easier to stomach that sort of scenario coming off of a win like that i would imagine you're probably in a good mood and not much bothers you yeah i was trying to you know i was like oh let's make the best of it free yeah. free vacation <laughs> chicago uh <laughs> yeah it, it wasn't the worst thing in the world by the way any injuries coming out of the fight no Nothing. no i mean i healed up i had a couple stitches in the top of my head that was from my head but um i think I like hit him with a combo and like came down with my head down. I don't know where I hit him, but I had a couple stitches on the top of my head. Those are out. So uh, my ankle's a little sore from like one of the first kicks I threw. He pulled back and I kind of hyperextended it. But other than that, I feel fine. My two favorite moments in that fight actually had nothing to do with the, the action itself. The first one came in between the first and the second round. They go to the corner audio and your longtime coach, Greg Jackson, sort of asks you this like nursery rhyme question about about what what did the fish say when it hit the wall and then you say oh damn right yeah okay and and the the amazing thing about it is it's like just in the flow of the conversation like he's he's telling you stuff you, your corner is talking to you and then he just asks you this question and you take a beat and then you just say oh damn and he's like all right we're on let's go he's done that to you before yeah uh he always asks me like or tells me a joke or a riddle and um He's just trying to see like where I'm at mentally. That's amazing. And so he wanted to, he wanted to see if I was rocked. I wasn't. Um, you know, I was fine. Uh, I was in my own head. We were keeping kind of a higher pace than I would have liked, um, but I trained for it. So um, he was just picking my, telling me what to do, and then he was asking me a question to see if I was paying attention, if I was retaining, it, or if I was in my own head. Sure. D- does he do that every fight? Usually. Wow. And it's always a different question? Yeah. Yeah, he's got a couple. Um, you know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes I get them right. And sometimes uh, I can't think because it's just so much is going on. Sure, sure. But has he asked you that particular one before? Yeah, he asked me that one before, but I never got it right. Wow. that's a, so, so, so if you get it wrong, what does that say to him? Uh, I mean... He's still going to let you fight, right? He usually does the same the same effect because I'll, sometimes I've been like, I don't know. <laughs> and then he'll tell me and then we both kind of laugh and then then I go back out there. That's a, And does he do that with all the other? I've never heard him do that before. Is that just something that you and him do? I don't know, to be honest. Uh, we, you know, he knows that you know, I, I go out there and I do my thing and I'm so in my own head like dissecting the fight that when I come out in between rounds, his, his job is just to kind of relax me and keep me happy. Sure. Um, give me positive feedback and then tell me what he'd like me to do more of. Um, so that, that's our thing. You've never asked one of your teammates, Hey, does, does Greg ask you these riddles in between rounds? <laughs> uh, no, 
I would have, but I, okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't hate you for not. Um, and then my second favorite part was that picture. I mean, that moment really. And there's now this picture, um, that, uh, that the UFC took, I think the, the gentleman's name is Jeff Botari for Getty Images and the UFC. The fight is over. Clearly you have won the horn sounds and you are on your knees and you're looking up at the sky and it's kind of like you're thanking the crowd. You're, I don't know, I don't know exactly what, you know, but there's just so much that you can say. We're showing our own Esther Lynn's version of it, which is from the side equally great. What, what are you doing there? Uh, I was just acknowledging the crowd, you know, um, I, I'm not one of the guys that talks a lot before fights. I don't really enjoy all that. Um, I've always believed in, and just, going out there and putting on the best show possible. I understand that I'm an entertainer and a fighter as well. So, I mean, I was trying to give the, the crowd, you know, acknowledgement, you know, every once in a while I'll give a thumbs up or I'll, I'll do something, you know, it's just, it's fun for me. You know, if I'm not having fun with it, then why am I doing it? Yeah. So, uh, you know, with 18,000 people, you know, on their feet screaming, that was the biggest crowd I've ever fought in front of. Wow. Um, and so, you know, it was amazing just the energy in the crowd and, and, uh, <laughs> it was half me kind of saying thank you and half saying, thank God it's over. <laughs> yeah, I was exhausted. I, I would imagine there are times, um, throughout the fight where you're like, what more do I have to do to this guy to end him? Right. Yeah. There was a few times that I was hitting him with flurries that I, I, I was like, Jesus, you know, like I, I tur like turned my head for a second to like, look for the referee to see like, are you going to stop this? And then, when I would like look back, he was already, he was already there and trying to fire back. And I'd be like, man, this guy just, <laughs> he just won't go down. Yeah. Is that, is that, is that a weird feeling for you? Like, do you start to lose confidence? Do you start to question? I have to hit harder. Cause I heard you tell our, uh, our colleague Luke Thomas that you don't even hit a heavy bag that hard. Yeah. Um, and, and that's like the crazy thing is, uh, you know what the, the amount of times that I've broken my hands and, yes. you know, as been doing this for going on uh 14 years professionally um it you know you get a lot of a little arthritis and you ache if you hit like the bags too hard over and over and over so um if i'm gonna do power on the bags i i have to wear bigger gloves and it's like that's a padded bag and i don't i don't try to hit it that hard and um i was hitting him with everything i had and and he was just taking it so it, it was tripping me out and Incredible. it wasn't frustrating. I just more, I knew that I was doing a lot of damage and, and you know, I, I wish his corner would have threw in the towel, to be honest. Earlier. Yeah. What, yeah. Because I'm third round. Yeah. Especially in the third. Cause yeah. I mean, I could see on his face, he was just in there with all heart. Wow. And, and he's a young talented fighter like what's the point of taking damage like that? Sure. So, so if you're him, his age coming up, would you have wanted your corner to throw in the towel? Uh, no. I mean, he, he could be pissed, but I, I feel like, I feel like that should be more of a thing. Sure. Honestly, we're, we're fighters. Like you look at my fight with uh, Holloway. I didn't even tell my corner. I broke my hand or broke my jaw and I fought three rounds. Yeah. You know? And, and it's like, that's just what I'm going to do because in my mind, I kept thinking, no, you can still win this. You can still win this. But that's that's the way we train is to never give up. Yeah. So, you know, you almost need somebody to go, hey, you know, let, uh, another day. You sure, know, it's sure, like sure. It, in boxing that happens all the time. Sure, sure. So, um, you know, the, the coaches will say, hey, I'm going to give you one more round. If you don't do something different, if it, you go out there and it looks the exact same, I'm not I'm not going to allow you to take damage. Yeah, anymore. I love that. So, I, I mean, that. Uh, on one hand, it was still he was still in the fight. But at the same time, uh, at the end of the fight, I tried to, like, pick him up to like, you know, get him back on his feet. And he, he didn't even seem like he knew where he was. Wow. So uh, I was like, I let go and then I was kind of confused and then they pulled me away. But yeah, he was, he was out of it. There was also a moment that has uh, surfaced online where, you know, uh, Greg uh, was wearing a, a microphone and your other cornermen were kind of getting excited and telling you to go. And he's like, relax, discipline, discipline. And I'm wondering if you could hear that. I mean, obviously you can't hear the whole thing, but could you hear them getting excited? And did you like Greg's approach more of just chill? Like, were they getting you too excited? Cause it did seem like when they were yelling that you started to swing a little more wildly. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm in between those two. I, I heard that clip and, um, 
they they saw that I was having a lot of success with uh, pushing him backwards, and they wanted me to keep pushing him backwards. Um, but I got excited just because, you know, I, I was excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I could see what Greg meant. And then the reason he was so, like, emotional was kind of a trip. I got a text from him about a few hours before the fight, um, before the fight started. I was on the treadmill doing, like, my pre-workout. And Greg texts me, and he's like, hey, I don't think I'm going to be there. Um, my flight got canceled. They put me on another flight. I don't even know if that one's going to take off because of the Buffalo. Uh, he was there the night before. Yeah, yeah. Albany. Albany. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, so I didn't tell my other coaches because I didn't want them to stress about it. I was just kind of like, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay, you know. And then I text him a couple hours later. I was like, hey, you know, any luck? And the text never went through. Oh, man. So. I was like, oh, and uh, then I was watching my teammate Lando fight uh, as I was getting all my stuff to, together to go down to the fight. And uh, I saw Greg in his corner. So I was like, sweet. <laughs> you know, he made, uh, so I'll have a, I'll have a coach there. And um, so I know that he was up on a high from that fight. And then right before I fought Tim Kennedy, uh -huh. you know, he didn't perform so well. And um, I know they didn't expect that. And so he came back, you know, down and then my fight got him back up. So I feel like he, he was on an emotional roller coaster. And so uh, I feel like he, he acted like a little bit out of his normal character because he's the calm one usually. Sure, sure, sure. It was, it was. Yeah, but I mean, every, everybody was excited and uh, they all wanted me to win. They are all on the same page. So. Sure. Afterwards in, in, in the cage and at the, the press conference, you were you were you were talking and i feel like you were saying something and then there was more to what you were saying when you were talking about coming back and and you know the respect and wanting bigger fights and wanting to be talked to what were you really trying to say to us there can you tell us i feel like there was more to what you were saying um it just you know it's all business right yeah you know and people are always like ah it's just business you know when people attack you on twitter when you know when you get treated a certain way but it's not you know it's like this is my life this has been my job this has been my like everything i've done um so it's just like people like don't take it personal well i do because i go out there i every interview i do i'm 100 percent honest you know every time i fight i leave everything i i have out there um so when people say don't take it personal it's hard not to so who said that to me you? coming from uh -huh. Who said that? Uh, just people in general. Okay. Say that fans, media, friends, family, don't take it personal. You're like, you, you would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I always laugh. It's like, I'd like to do like parody videos of somebody, you know, getting fired at work or like yeah, yeah. having a bad day and then me being right there go, oh man, that part when you cried, when he, when he fired you, that was great. Yeah. That was a good one. You know, it's like, like this job is, is, is it's crazy and not normal. You know what I mean? It's not a normal thing. So people say, don't take it personal. It, it, it's hard not to. So like I was saying, coming up from, from Palm Spring, there's, there was nobody here doing what I did 13 years ago. Um, wanting to pursue this as a career. I feel like, uh, what I did coming from here was, it was hard to do making it all the way to the top. And then, and then not getting certain respect is, I feel like, is is not fair. Is there a chance you don't fight again? It's possible. <laughs> I mean, uh, at at this stage in my career, it's like uh, I enjoy what I do, and I take it one fight at a time. But you know, to to fight a guy like that and be an underdog to me is is a little disrespectful. Um, I, I thought that he was a great up and coming fighter. And, and to me, that just tells me people think, Oh, you're, you're close to, you're, you're on your way out. Yeah. And, you know? And, and I, I hate that because I make it on my terms. Sure. So, so what do you think the chances are that you do fight again? Like, are you leaning towards not? No, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll fight again. Uh, I'm pretty positive because I, I think they'll come at me with a big fight. Okay. But uh, I, I'm just not into the whole, you know, begging for a title fight and, and, um, you know, it's like, I gotta have you, you know, these managers try to get a whole campaign about it. Yeah, yeah. And when I do that before and I tried to do it in my own way, 
and unsuccessful at it, um, it, it just took the love out of it. You know, every day people are, you, you read the social media and you get it, you know, you're trying to fire back and, and trying to stay in, in the whole conversation of it. And it's just like, it, it means nothing to me. It's like, if you want to give me the title shot, if you want to give me the big fights then just give it to me, like, I'm going to show up, I'm going to perform, but for me to have to like say, please give it to me. And, yeah, yeah, and like, digging. like, no, my fighting, my fighting speaks for itself. You know, right. my performance too. If I, it's like when I lost the two fights, I got knocked all the way back, you know, quite a bit. And I had to take fights to get back to where I'm at. So I won three in a row against pretty, pretty tough guys. And I'm, I'm back up in the mix. So I'm, I'm, I should let that speak for itself. Do you have an ideal fight next? Like if you had your way, I'm not asking you to beg for it or ask for it, but just like in your mind, he's like, oh man, this would be perfect. The winner of Aldo and Holloway. And then obviously if one of them gets injured, call me. Okay. So you're going to stay ready for that, for that card? I, I mean, right now I'm taking the holidays off, yeah, but yeah. I'll be back in the gym in January and, and um, just try to stay in shape because I think I'd be stupid to not, you know? Sure, sure. Um, last quick thing. You were there in Sacramento. You saw Faber's last fight, and I know you never fought him, but you fought a lot of the same people and you were part of WC, fought on the same cards. What does your eye Faber mean to you? Man, uh, for a long time, I, I just thought I was this close to fighting him. Yeah. So I was always kind of we weren't friends or nothing, but, uh, you know, he was great for the sport. Uh, he, he carried the division for a long time and, um, you know, it definitely helped pave the way for, for guys like me. So, uh, I think, I think he had an awesome career and, uh, glad to have, you know, been in the same circles of with him for, for years and years. Awesome. Well, thank you, Cub. I appreciate it. Congratulations on a phenomenal performance. It was uh, it was great being there in Canada, and it was great seeing the Toronto fans show you guys so much love. They went from chanting his name early in the fight to just showering you with praise, and uh, deservedly so afterwards. So enjoy the holidays. Thanks for coming on early, and uh, appreciate the time as always. And oh, by the way, thanks for getting me again with the damn uh, sticker. You always get me with that thing. It's amazing. I, always, I think you're trying to be nice, and then, of course, I, I, I get got, as they say. Hey, well, I mean, it, it means that I, that I care about you. That's what it means. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you, Cub. All the best to you. All right. All right. See there you. he is. Cub Swanson, winner of that fight of the year contender against Duho Choi.